the motion we agreed to, the Honourable Paula Bennett. It is quite something to sit on this side of the House and see the looks on the faces sitting around uh, David the Shearer. And all you can see is three words going through all of the Labour members' heads, and that is, should have been Cunliffe. Should have been Cunliffe. Because quite frankly, if that's as good as it gets for Labour, then it's kind of embarrassing and kind of not as good as it could be. Should have been Cunliffe. Should have been Cunliffe. Actually, let's think about welfare reform. Let's talk about where welfare is at in this country. And I am going to ask the indulgence of the House right now, and I know this is going to be kind of shaky ground for a few, but let's imagine that Labour were in government right now. Oh, no, no, no. I know, I know, I know, I know. And they were actually looking at these teenagers that are not in employment or educational training, that they were looking at beneficiaries and what their needs were. What do you think Labour would be doing? Nothing. Nothing. What do you think, seriously, colleagues, what do the colleagues the here think? Honourable Annette. Speaker, yesterday you made a point of reminding us that we don't include you in debate. Um, this member has included you quite a number of times, and, and I don't think you all together agree with some of the ways you've been included and some of the things she said. So I think perhaps you could bring her back to the standing orders of the House. Order, I would discourage members from interrupting these short speeches, but then uh, senior members should be aware of the fact they shouldn't bring the speaker into the debate. I the thank Honourable the Paula Bennett. for the break, quite frankly, because um, it was nice to um, take a wee minute there and, and have a bit of a breath, because quite frankly, if one thought about what Labor would be doing for beneficiaries, for the most disadvantaged in this country that need a hand, the answer quite simply is nothing. Absolutely nothing. When we look at the current NEAT figures, it is those aged 20 to 24 that are actually doing worse off in this country. Who do you think was in government when they were at school? Who do we think who were actually in government when they were at school and left them on the scrap heap of no achievement? It was the previous Labor government. We hear a lot of noise from the left about those not in education, employment or training, but actually when they were there, they did not actually perform for those young people that need it most. We saw a scattergun approach that actually made no difference when it came to the intensive support that some of these young people need. I say to my colleagues in this House, this government will not do it. It may be hard decisions, they may not always be easy to make, everyone may not like them, but we will most certainly make them and we will stand up next to these young people. We are seeing 16 and 17 year olds, year after year after year, left not able to achieve and not have the same opportunities that they should be given. So we will be wrapping at least $148.8 million of support around around them in the belief that we can actually turn around their opportunities and see something brighter for them. And that is going to make a difference. Quite frankly, a light touch across thousands that don't need it has not been working. And it is time that we turned our attention to actually doing the hard stuff. Well, let's be clear, welfare, which is uh, uh, the, the biggest reforms that this country has seen for decades, and the opposition spokesperson can't even get a main question in the House on it, and when we actually have a question, she gets one, one supplementary and she stuffs that up. So that's how effective the opposition is in this House at the moment. Quite frankly, someone needs to look at what they're doing and how they should do it. Let's talk about actually the differences between the left and the right. Beneficiaries themselves have got to a stage where they are sick of the hand-wringing, the bleeding hearts, the victimisation that comes continuously of a poor them from the left, and they want to see the right kind of ambitions, the right kind of drive behind them. They will get the kind of support they need and they deserve under this government. Change is on its way and we're already seeing the positive effects of it. Already in the month of April itself, we thought saw 2,000 fewer on benefits over that period. And let's put some perspective around it. In January 2020, 
2010, there were 68,000 people on the unemployment benefit. That being the effects of the worst recession we had seen, and certainly those companies not able to take on employees. Today, Mr Speaker, we see 52,400. That number is coming down month after month after a month and is making a big, big change for those people that need it most. Catherine Delahunty.